Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Inside Guns with your host, me, the Yankee Marshall. Today, I want to talk about something that was probably the hottest topic of discussion in my last couple of live chats, and that is the notion that uh, Joe Biden is going to ban 80 percenters, you know, ghost guns, guns that don't have serial numbers because you build them from a kit. He's wanting to ban those. Well, I tried to find where he said he was actually going to do that specifically, couldn't find it, but I did find where he said he wanted to do something about ghost guns and other issues because he wanted to address the gun violence in this country, which is odd to me because like how many crimes have been committed with P, uh, a P80s or, or 80% lower kits or any of that? I don't know that any have been. So it's kind of hard to say I'm addressing violent crime, addressing violent crime by getting rid of these, even though these have never been involved in a crime or any substantial number of crimes. doesn't make a lot of sense. But like I said, I didn't find where he said he was going to ban them, but I did see, I did find where he said he wanted to do something about 80% lowers, etc. He wanted to have background checks on them. So I wanted to take some time today to address that. Uh, he said if he couldn't get things done through Congress, he's going to do it through executive order. So let's talk about what he can and can't do through executive order. First off, can he ban them like people are saying? No, he cannot ban them. Uh, it is already established in law in the law that we have a constitutional right to build and manufacture our own firearms as long as we're not doing it for resale. That is an established right in this country. So him saying that you can't do that anymore, that would require a lot more than an executive order. That wouldn't uh, stand uh, court scrutiny for two seconds. So I don't expect you to uh, see him doing that because he knows that wouldn't uh, stand up. And writing an executive order that gets knocked down by the court is kind of like a black eye for a president. They don't like doing that. So you're not going to see him try to ban them. Uh, now, he did say he'd like to see background checks on them. Can he do that himself? No, that's not within his power either. He can't suddenly require background checks for parts for a gun that aren't legally a gun. That's not within his power. He can't do that. Uh, that would take Congress, that would take passing legislation, so he can't do that. Now, what can he do is the question, though. Well, I do believe he could somehow try to manipulate the ATF to say, okay, these 80 percenters, if they have these things, and if it's all the pieces you need to build a gun, you don't have to produce anything of your own, well, then now we're counting that as a gun. So then you'd have to do a background check. That I would see them maybe possibly trying to do. They would do this, like I said, through the ATF's interpretation of the law and what is and what isn't a firearm. That's something he could do. And if they could get the ATF to rule that, hey, if you buy all the parts from someone to make a gun and all the parts you need to build the gun and everything, you know, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to provide so much as a drill bit you know, outside of your tools that you already have, that's a gun. They're just basically selling you a gun. Uh, and if they did that, well, then they could get it to where you could have a background check on them, which would kind of negate, I guess, the reason most people buy them. I can't imagine people buy them because, you know what I want? I want a, a Glock, but I don't want it to be as nice as a Glock, and I want to have a chance of fucking it up so that it's not good for anything anymore because I try to do it myself. Uh, I think most people like it because, like I say, they have no serial numbers. That's what a ghost gun is. You know, ghost guns meant different things over different times. It used to be guns that had the serial numbers scratched off of them. They would call them ghost guns. And then for a while, they referred to uh, guns that could make it through metal detectors without being detected as ghost guns because they were invisible to technology. But nowadays, it's the P80s, the, the, the polymer lowers, you know, the stuff like that for uh, ARs. Those are what they consider a ghost gun, a gun that can't be traced back because it has no serial number. And uh, a lot of gun owners want that, not because it can't be traced back to them. That's not the issue. They don't think they're going to like commit a crime with it and they want to get away with it because no one can track the gun. Most crimes are not solved by tracking the gun. Let me tell you that. They almost never arrive at a gun scene and go, hmm, I bet the serial number of the gun that did this was this, so let's track it back. No, unless they find the gun itself, they don't even do that, and that's rare. Uh, but so even if they found the polymer 80 kit, they could still do things like, okay, who bought polymer 80 kits, blah, blah, blah. But here's the thing. That's not why people are buying them. Not so they can commit a crime and leave the gun at the scene. They just don't want the government involved in what they purchase. So they don't want to have to go through a background check. They don't want the government putting them on lists of who owns what. 
They don't think the government has a right to be involved in their own private purchases and their own uh, decisions in exercising their Second Amendment right. That's why people like ghost guns. But uh, no matter what they say about them, like I said, he can't ban them. He can't actually require a background check without going through either Congress or going to the ATF and doing some major jig juggling of uh, terms and definitions, etc. So the worst we could probably see, we're not going to see a ban. Uh, I'm not even sure we're going to see a background check. But the worst we could probably see would be them being a, uh, required to have a background check for a while until someone filed a lawsuit and it probably got thrown out of court. Or someone just said, okay, because if they write the law and say, okay, if you sell at 80% lower and all the parts to build the gun and the drill bits and the, uh, 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 the forms to do it, then it's a gun. Well, then the company would just stop selling the forms and have you buy the form somewhere else. Wouldn't be part of the kit anymore. Or they'd stop selling you the drill bit and just tell you what size you need to go get. They'd find some way around it because these laws are usually stupid anyway. Poorly written, stupid, blah. They don't do anything, and they're all usually just to appease certain people. They aren't really to made, uh, designed to make a difference. So they'd get around it. So I wouldn't worry too much about uh, polymer 80s right now or P80s or uh, 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 polymer lowers or any of these kits that you finish at home, you know, that are ghost guns, because his hands are very much tied on what he can do. Uh, because most of the things people are talking about right now, he just po positively cannot do. Cannot make them illegal. Cannot, with a stroke of a pen, require a background check. The most he can do is try to mess with the ATF's definition of a firearm, which would uh, come under a lot of scrutiny. So that's pretty much the most dangerous thing we face right now, uh, as far as the polymer 80s. So if you like them, buy them. But don't buy like a ton of them right now because you're afraid they're going to go away because that's what a lot of people are trying to tell you right now. And that's what they want to do. Remember, I sat, uh, I heard from someone who sat on, in on one of the major uh, advertising companies that handles the advertisement for a lot of big gun channels. And they were talking about how do we increase panic and increase sales and how do we maintain the panic? You know, so don't fall for that stuff. Don't run out and buy 50 of them. Don't spend your mortgage on them thinking that either you'll have them later when you need them or you can sell them off to people if you have to. Uh, you know, or maybe sell them off at a profit later. I wouldn't be betting on that right now. Because like I said, I don't think anything's going to come of this. So don't be panicked. Don't be scared. If you like them and you want one, buy one. If not, don't feel like you have to because I don't think they're going anywhere anytime soon. All right, everybody. Now I want to move on to what you know is my favorite part of the show, gun talk. And today I want to answer a question from a viewer who said they saw on my Instagram that I got an RDO slide from Langdon Tactical, the LTT Elite RDO slide, which is the Beretta slide cut for a red dot. And they asked me, have I decided what I was going to put it on yet? Well, you know, until today I hadn't, but now I have, so I'm going to show you. All right, here we have it, my Beretta LTT RDO. RDO slide. Now, as you can see, this is a slide made by Langdon Tactical, or at least modified by Langdon Tactical. They take the Beretta universal slide here, the new slides they use on their newer guns, and they basically, uh, they, well, they add some front serrations here. You know, that's a nice change. But I think the big change here that everyone's looking at is that they modify it for a red dot. That's the first time that's been available on any of the Beretta 90 series guns. After they cut it, they put this plate on there so it's ready for a red dot. Not only does it have the plate, but the plate also has a built-in suppressor height rear sight. And they combine that with a suppressor height front sight. So when this comes, it's ready to go on a gun. Uh, the only problem is I didn't have a frame for it. I didn't want to put it on my LTT frame because I carry that gun, so I want to leave it as is. So I started thinking, well, I'll have to try to find a slide I can buy to put this on, but I could not find one. I looked all over for multiple different types of slides for Beretta 90 series guns and just couldn't find them. With a rail, without a rail, couldn't find one for sale. Not at a decent price. The one I found on Gunbroker was like 800 bucks for just the frame. So I was like, well, what do I have that I can put this on? And I started thinking and I was like, well, you know what? I have one a frame I think it would go perfect on. And that is my new Beretta 92XG full size. I thought it would be perfect on this. I don't carry this gun or anything, so I'm not losing a carry gun by putting the uh, RDO slide on it. And the reason I'm losing a carry gun by putting the RDO slide on it isn't because I wouldn't carry a gun with a red dot. It's just that I can't find a holster for it. 
But I started thinking, well, you know what? This has the Vertec grip. It's got the extra serrations. It's actually made nice. It's got the front rail and it will take that universal slide that Langdon uses. So I thought this would be the perfect frame to put it on. So I'm gonna do that tonight. First, I just gotta get it disassembled here. All right, since the RDO did not come with a barrel or a guide rod, I actually do want to order one of the Langdon Tactical Barrels. I just haven't gotten around to it. I'm going to go ahead and take the barrel and uh, the guide rod and spring out of this one, since this one won't be needing it, since it won't be on a gun. Uh, I'll probably eventually change the guide rod to full metal also, but that's not something you have to do. It's just something I like to do. So for now, this will put a barrel and a guide rod in it. One nice thing about using this gun and using its barrel is the 92 G series guns, the 92 X G series guns, moved to the nicer target crown barrels, so that will be a nice one in the RDO slide. And putting it in here is just as easy as assembling the gun back. Put the barrel back in, put the guide rod in, and then we will slide it on the frame here. First time I've ever tried to put it on here, so hopefully it goes on easily. Hope I don't find out there's a reason why these won't go together. Uh, doesn't look like it. Nope, goes on there just fine. All right, I really like how that looks. That looks pretty badass here. So I'm gonna have to say, I think that's the right choice. I like putting it on the uh, Vertex style grip of the 92 X series gun. So now I just gotta find another frame to put the, the slide from this frame onto. But you know, that can be done later. For now, this is gonna be the gun I'm focusing on. Like I said, wanna get that Langdon barrel for it, wanna change the hammer out. But other than that, can't wait uh, to get this all set up so I can take it to the range. So there you have it. There's my RDO slide on my Beretta 92XG frame. And tomorrow, if you come back for tomorrow's show, I'll show you what red dot I'm gonna put on it. All right, everybody, I wanna to end today's show as usual with our viewer EDC of the day. And our viewer EDC today comes to us from Ivan K. And Ivan is carrying his SIG P226 Extreme with a 357 SIG conversion barrel on it in his 1791 gun leather holster. And he's actually open carrying here because he's carrying for every second matters day, which is the second of every month, which is when I open carry also to start conversations about carrying. Now I have to say, I really like this setup. The Pig 226, as I like to call it, especially the Extreme model, is a very nice gun. I love SIGs. Right behind Berettas, they're my favorite semi-autos. And I like Beretta a lot of because of the way it looks and my history with the Beretta. The SIGs, it's just because they're awesome freaking guns. I think they are easily some of the best uh, combat weapons, duty weapons, and concealed carry and self-defense weapons you can possibly buy. They're just great all-around guns. So I really approve of this. I also love 1791 holsters, so nice setup. But there is one thing about this picture that kind of hurts my feelings. Uh, it makes it look like you've not paid any attention to me whatsoever. Because I like to think if I've taught you all anything, and I probably haven't, but if I have taught you anything, it's to match your belt to your holster. Come on. Uh, black belt, brown holster? It'd be one thing if he was concealed carrying, but he said he was open carrying for the second. Every second matters. So people saw this. He was representing the gun community. Black belt, brown holster. The only way this could be any worse is if he was wearing like white tennis shoes while he was doing it. Uh, and if that's the case, uh, don't take this the wrong way. I mean this in the most loving way possible, and I don't want to overreact or seem like I'm being extreme here. But if that is the case, then you should be stripped naked you should be tied hammock style between two poles and then the largest drag queen in the land should come and dance on your testicles. I think that would be appropriate punishment for that. I mean, come on, some people in the gun community, you know, they're a little bit rough around the edges. Some of them like to consider themselves, you know, animals and tough guys, etc. cetera. Uh, but we're not savages. We can at least match our accessories. So, Please do that from now on, especially if you're going to send me pictures, because like I said, makes me sad because I think you don't listen to me. But that being said, that's our viewer EDC of the day, Ivan K with his Pig 226 in his 1791 holster. All right, everybody, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you come back tomorrow to see what red dot I ended up putting on my Beretta LTT RDO slide. Until then, I want to sign off as usual by saying, as far as the state of the world today is concerned, well, you know, it is what it is. 
But if we keep our heads about us, we ignore the fear mongers and the profiteers who want to manipulate us and make us just angry and afraid all the time to where we do stupid shit and spend too much money. If we ignore those people, what things will be in the future is better.